Today we are going to talk about SAP Open Text Vendor Invoice Management Process. This is an end-to-end -end video which covers everything in ICC to invoice process. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go to this transaction OAWD. OAWD is the place where we have to scan and we have to upload an invoice so generally you click on drag and drop then you find the place where we have stored all the documents okay generally we prefer a pdf now if you have configured tiff you can do that now you just drag and drop and you click on allow so this says that the work item id has been created and a workflow has been triggered now we'll create a new session and we will go to we will check a transaction code which is important is this transaction code is the vim admin so this will this will this will monitor the icc data so this is the admin tool that is and here we will search with the id which is the latest because this is the one that we sent so if you notice the status is sent to OCR now okay now what we will do we will check our ICC ICC client this is if you notice this is the ICC invoice capture center where all the OCR happens okay so now we'll go to the admin tool and we will see what's the status so we'll click on refresh and if you notice the extraction is completed now so from send to ocr it becomes extraction completed now we'll do a dp trigger now this process which we are doing the dp trigger is automated in a production environment but this is the process where we are doing where it's not automated okay now we are going to the icc validation client and you will see we'll click on open and from there we can see that image okay so if you see this is the waiting for data this is the invoice so if you see the gross amount has not been populated so you can just click on the vendor and you can pick up the vendor number from there okay so if you notice now we are going for the amount we'll click on the gross amount so we have to select that put the cursor on the gross amount and we have to put that amount okay this quality of invoice is very poor so i ocr could not read it okay now we'll click on submit the current has do you want to save anyway so we will just push it uh, further because there was the vendor number could not be read okay now whether something stops in icc or not it's up to you how you configure the system okay now if you click on refresh it will become validation complete okay now again we'll do a dp trigger okay all this process the dp trigger portion can be automated and it's automated everywhere okay so now if you see it's gone away so now what we are going to do is we are going to go to invoice cockpit okay now in the newer version you will have something called the vim workplace okay so if you go now you go to sap development and here you can see invalid vendor because we pushed it if you know remember now this is the number we have 119 so what we are going to do is we are going to click on execute so once we click on execute okay now you can see what are the different options we have okay now if we click on image we can see this image so the invoice is paper invoice that was scanned is now attached to this image okay so now we'll just see the image everything is fine the amount is perfect or not now what we are going to do is we will hit the back button and we'll see what are the stuffs that we can do so if you notice here is the index data so you can see this is here you can put the doc vendor number okay so if you click on simulate business rule it will tell you what are the exceptions so the first exception is invalid vendor invalid requester for a non-pure invoice 
so the vendor number will find and we'll put it here and we click on enter okay so so this is the vendor number and then we have this requisitioner email we'll click on this okay and here we can find out what is the requisition or email okay and then we are going to save the data once we save the data this document this this document is completely saved okay now the next thing is the missing mandatory information so something is mandatory is missing so in this process the expense type is something mandatory so we are putting domestic gm and now we are going to save it so here we have data and here you can put whether it's a credit memo or all those things and if you see it is smart enough to that it read all the line items also okay now you will see what is the exception it has so if you notice it is having an exception of suspected duplicates now let's see uh, what we are going to do so we will run business rules and probably it will come back again so if you refresh okay so if you see now it has come in the suspected duplicate column okay now if you so we are going to put it as non-duplicate and here if you notice you can see all the process log here okay now what we can do is we can select non-duplicate okay so if you notice these are all the duplicate records that is there okay now it's up to you you want to uh, you want to put non-duplicate or not so here what we'll do is we'll change the amount to something else okay and we'll save it okay let's see and again we have to adjust because otherwise this will not balance okay so what we are going to do we put this amount we'll save it and we'll bypass this see now the amount still so the duplicate invoice thing is configured amount reference number and vendor and the document and the vendor so if these three fields matches then it becomes duplicate since we change the amount it is not a duplicate now i ran business rule and it will come up in another exception so if you see it, is, it has come in approval required now what we are going to do is we are going to submit for approval okay so we click the submit for approval button and we'll click yes and here you can see the requisition or email is there and now we are going to search the the approval okay and we are going to change this to something the same as the the requester email we are going to change now the approval workflow will be triggered okay now this workflow is this approval workflow gets triggered because we have configured such that the workflows will get triggered to another to this id so if you notice approval header it will show up and let's see uh where it shows up so we are now going to swi6 to check with whom the this workflow is this is the business object oh, and you put 119 here and we enter and we execute and here you notice this is the workflow that is triggered we click on it and this is the approval that is it is with it which now we are going to close this so it shows that it is with him now now we are going to execute this and here if you see you have the option of i will enter accounting information and once i click on it i can enter the gl account and cost center let me put the g and you if you want you can put someone else to enter the accounting information so if you do a name search so we we'll click on name search and we'll put last name and we'll find a person who will do this and we'll click approve and now we are going to save it okay and we are going to click approve 
and it's assigned to account and now here you will give a meaningful information of what you want to do with this particular uh, invoice now we have sent it for entering coding information okay now let's log in with that user id okay so let's log in and we'll give the user id and here the this portion again we are doing this because we don't have a single sign on good we don't have single sign on otherwise i couldn't have showed it with different user id so now we'll log in and we'll go to the inbox so again we'll show you where it is in okay so let's see now we are going to check this transaction code we have to get we are going to the VIM analytics where we can check what is the what is the status of 119 now we are going to 